Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm super excited to dive into today's conversation with Amy Dangerfield. Amy is an international published and award-winning documentary, lifestyle, and commercial photographer. Born and raised in China, Amy currently resides in Phoenix, Arizona with her husband and four little ones. Amy loves a good real life story, the pretty, the ugly, and everything in between. Amy believes that through honest documentation of the lives we live in, we get to understand each other much better. Welcome, Amy. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Hi, thank you for having me here. So tell us really who you are and what you're really, really passionate about. So, um, I am Amy Dangerfield, and I was born and raised in China. I am a documentary family and commercial photographer. Um, so, I live in Phoenix, Arizona with my four little kids. I'm also a homeschool mom <laughs> trying to raise bilingual kids. Um, so, my life is kind of chaotic. Okay? Um, so, I grew up with my grandparents in the movie industry, documentary film industry. My grandma, my mom's mom, is actually a movie like film editor. Um, hey. So, I've always been in that world of just seeing all different stories and experiencing different types of life and lifestyle. So like right now, I am just really passionate or I can say like, I'm just always fascinated by real life. Like what's going on in front of me? Uh, where do these people come from? Like what made them who they are? And just trying to find that human connection. And of course, as a photographer, I am really passionate about using my talent to tell those story, to share those story, and also giving um, those less represented groups yeah. their voice, if I, I can. Yes, I love that so much. So as a child, were you like super into photography or film, like just like everyone else in your family? Um, so I've always had a camera around me. I think the first photo I took was when I was like four and, um, I still have it of my parents when we were visiting. And then of course there was this giant trash can, like in the middle of the frame and my parents yeah. were in the corner. And I think I've, I've come a long way since then. Um, and I've always loved taking photos, but I started with actually more focusing on like landscape and nature because before I had kids, I would travel a lot. And then that was my way of sharing what I experienced with the rest of the family. Um, and then you know, when I have kids and then kind of changes everything. It. <laughs> yeah, so you totally. actually were a photographer even before you had children. Cause usually you hear the story is like, I had my babies and then I picked up a camera. So, but you had the camera before the kids. Yeah, for cool. sure. Yes. I love that. I love that. So as for those that are really unfamiliar with documentary photography, how would you explain its significance to you and why you fell in love with it? Yeah. So documentary, a lot of times I, I get this question a lot and I always go back to the definition. So if you go to the dictionary, you will see under documentary, it says, um, preserve and present truth and fact. Mm -hmm. So that's the significant significance of it, right? Um, there is a lot of power in honesty and especially in this day and age, you know, with AI and all that, we question like, is this real, right? And so with documentary, you get to tell people, yes, this is a true story, this yeah. happened. And then that is a, very powerful. Um, and that's what draws me in initially. And also it's, it's just such a unique approach that um, really fits into my personality. I am an observer. Like I love just people watching and trying to figure out again, I'm curious. I'm really curious. You see what's going on. And it just really fits into this genre that I am trying to figure out what the story is, what is unfolding in front of me. I love that. Do you find for you, is there a difference between lifestyle photography and documentary photography? And what would you define it as for yourself? Yeah, so um, definitely there is a big difference. I think um, from a technical standpoint, documentary, we're not supposed to change the scene, meaning I would not direct or pose. I would not even turn on or off light in people's home. Um, 
as versus in lifestyle, I get to actually post people, direct them, and that is acceptable. And also with documentary, um, I walk into real life as it is, right? So I'm not going to style them. Yeah. Um, as for lifestyle, I am trying to create that aesthetic, right? Everything looks great. So I will style my clients for lifestyle sessions. So these are the technical you know, points, but a lot of times I say lifestyle is more about what life could be mm. and documentary is what life is. Oof, good definition. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's funny because I am a very, like, I'm a posy, pose, pose <laughs> photographer. Like, and it's funny, I love how you mentioned like personality and how it really comes into play with how you view your work and how you create your work. How did you kind of come, come to that discovery of that's how you see the world and embrace that? Because for me personally, being a post photographer has been something I have struggled with. I've tried to do lifestyle, I've tried documentary and I, I just can't shut up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so actually, so I had my camera before I had kids, right? Yeah. But, but when I started my business, I actually started with lifestyle. Um, so I did a lot of lifestyle sessions because it's also a new thing that I've never done before. Um, like people sent Christmas cards out here in the United States. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of cool. Um, and it was going well. And um, I was creating beautiful images for my clients, right? Um and of course, I was using this tagline, really cheesy tagline, I am preserving your unique family story. Um, and then I was just like, what story am I trying to tell exactly? Like, you know, most of my clients, when they go to these like locations, it was their first time, then rarely dress up the way I styled them in. And then we're in the middle of nowhere, like literally, we're in Arizona, right? And trying to dance and twirl. And it's just didn't quite make sense. Yeah. Um, and then for me, really, I just started to feel that even though I knew like this was not their day to day life, I still felt like, okay, if I am promoting this kind of lifestyle, I need to match it. Um, I'm supposed to dress up my kids, you know, a little nicer instead of, being, you know, totally dependent on the hand me downs. Um, and then I probably should take my kids out like for more adventures. But I have four kids and we're homeschooling and I'm running a business, right? It just, life is not like that. And then, so deep down, I start to feel like I was not a good mom and I was not doing enough. I was not fun and our life was not good enough. Um, so that was like taking a really big toll on me um, in the first place. But I thought, you know, I, I found myself a solution. I decide that, you know what, I'm going to be this fun mom and schedule the family vacation <laughs> to go back to China and visit my family uh, for Chinese New Year. Essentially, I scheduled myself a six week long lifestyle session. I came up with a gigantic shot list, you know, like my grandma holding my little baby and trying to take photos of their hands and um, you know, I coordinate outfits. We we're going to go see the giant panda. And then I even got my kids like panda hat and all that. Right. <laughs> but guess what? When I scheduled the vacation, we decided to go in 2020. Oh, no. <laughs> and I yeah. am from Wuhan. And oh, that is where goodness. COVID <gasps> started. Yes. So we went, we landed on January 17th and five days later the entire city, we have 9 million people. It went into lockdown. So nothing happened, right? After that, we're stuck at home. None of my photos were done. And now looking back, it was just so silly, but I was so mad, not because of the pandemic, but it's more like, come on, like I was supposed to make all these images and now I don't get to do anything. And then I just thought like, well, there goes my likes and followers and my business. Um, and then all of a sudden, after four weeks, we're going to stay for six weeks. And after four weeks, we got a notification that we were going to get evacuated out of the epicenter. And there we were. And we were boarded in this cargo plane that was retrofitted with seats. And so that's when reality just hit me. because. 
until this day, I still haven't been able to go back to visit. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I was not able to create any of those like fancy images. But at the same time, I also lost the opportunity to really document what it was like to spend time with family, which was the whole point of us going, right? Yeah. And um, I was just so hang up with this idea that life should be in this way. And it was not. And then I just could not get out of it. Um, and then afterwards, um, I was still taking photos throughout the whole process because I was committed to this 365 project. Um, but I was not looking at any of the photos because I didn't think any of those were good in comparison to what I had envisioned. Um, but after we were evacuated, I started to really like frantically go through all the photos because that's what I had left to hold yeah. on to. Um, and then I came across this photo that I took of my mom cooking. Um, and if you look at that photo, I've shared it before. If you look at that photo, it's the furthest thing from anything that you will say pretty. It's this tiny kitchen with all the clutter that she has collected over the years. And she was not dressed up in any way, but she was cooking. I took the photo initially because I felt spoiled that she was cooking and usually I'm the one cooking, right? And then my mom cooked us, the seven of us. So we had five people and adding my parents. So the seven of us, three meals a day, every day for four weeks straight. Every meal was a feast. Um, so I took a picture just to remember it. And then after we were settled in the quarantine camp, and then we we're FaceTiming our our parents, and my mom started to say, oh, you know, what you're eating, it's so yummy. I'm like, we're in a military camp. And then, so they told us that they started to have to count how many eggs they could eat each day so they don't run out of food um, because they can't just go out freely to get food anymore. And they would make comments that, oh, yeah, you guys took all the snacks um, for the plane rides. Um, so I realized that my mom literally drained her food storage Research. just so we could have a somewhat normal Chinese New Year celebration. And <gasps> that was her way of showing her love. And in the Chinese culture, like, I don't think I've ever said I love you or my mom to me like out loud but that photo when I look at it it's just the most unconditional love I will ever feel and shown in the most <laughs> most <laughs> humble way yeah so that's really the moment where I'm just like why did I like not see this in yeah. the moment um and now I'm really dedicated to just honor the real life and celebrate real life yeah. of my life right now. And also as a way to honor the real life that I ignored back yeah. in China. Oh, that is the most beautiful story. Wow. I am like, I've got tears running on my face right now. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've told that story multiple times. So finally I've gotten to the point that I, I'm not going to totally yeah, just cry during it. Totally. Cry I mean, time, that but... would change everything. I mean, even like the entire experience of not only that, but also, you know, going from the safety and the comfort of your mom's home to being in this military camp and, yeah. and like, and just realizing that like, wow, like they, they were, she was going through all their storage just for you. And like, that's, yeah. that is so beautiful. So when you came back, how did that change your business and how you looked at your own photography? So I have always taken photos from my own life, but yeah. I just never shared it because I yeah. didn't think they were good enough for the yeah. grid. Right. Um, and then I started to share them and people loved them yeah. because I think, especially after the pandemic, everybody just craves for that real connection. Yeah. Everybody wants you feel connected um so it actually got really good response and also just the fact that i shared some of the stories along the way of our trip to china and our evacuation and all that so people are following me for the story and they're curious and then after that i just kind of built on that 
like, hey, you know what? This is my story and I've made mistakes. So please don't make that same mistake again in your life. I love um, that. I love that. Now, you have niched into newborn and family in a documentary style way. Now, can you share a little bit about your approach when you are working with a family this way versus like maybe a lifestyle or, I mean, obviously Pose is very, very, come to my studio and <laughs> it's very different. Yeah, yeah. So it is very different. Um, with documentary, I give it enough time because I do believe that whatever is gold is there. Yeah. I just need to wait for it to happen. Give it the space and time. So that's one main difference. I feel is that my sessions are a lot longer. I start yeah. with three hour um, going yeah. up because you really need that time for everybody to totally feel them be to yeah. be themselves a hundred percent. And then I'm more like, you know, like not exactly a fly on the wall, just watching, but I'm very laid back and trying to think through the scenes like okay this is what's going on but what is really going on try to dig a little deeper um as versus you know lifestyle a lot of times we're on the time crunch like okay we yeah. got to get to that final results yeah. um so documentary is a lot more about the process than yeah. the final result I love that do you find that you like I'm sure like you've developed a process as like over time do you find that your clients are pretty much relaxed and go with a flow or do you find that you have some that are just like waiting for that direction and you're like hey like i'm just here to like be a part of your life and how do you how do you deal with that yeah so i think actually everybody at the very beginning of a photo session will feel a little awkward or uncomfortable yeah. that's just how it is i'm not part of the family and i I'm in their home, right? So there's always that phase. But what I usually try to do is I try to meet the family in advance, maybe the day before if I can, without taking any photos. Just go hang out with them, chat. Especially with little kids, that helps a lot. And then they know, okay, this is a friend instead of photographer. Um, and then during the session, I'll just do my thing. Like, and then eventually my clients were just like, okay, she's, she's just doing her thing. <laughs> I love that. So what would you say you average shooting, um, as far as number of images for a session? So I shoot a lot, but I deliver only the best, um, out of it. Um, when I take photos, it's also a little different because I cannot direct them. So when I see a moment happen, um, happening, I will shoot through the entire thing, which means I will have a lot of frames because, you know, maybe one person will close their eyes, but the next frame will be great. Um, so that way I can get that safety net, but I'm not constantly chasing after a moment. So I will be shooting and then I'll wait and observe and see what's going on and then move on to the next story, a mini story within the bigger story and then shoot through the moment. Um, and then, so I just call through um, each segment essentially and pick the best out of it. Um, it depends on the length. If I am doing like a three hour session versus like a 10 day full day and yeah. then the final image will be a lot different yeah. too. Very cool. Now, would you, now I, my first thing is like whenever I've been, I've literally done two on location sessions and it, this, it, the lighting situation stressed me out so badly. I was said to myself, never again. So <laughs> tell me how you get, get away from that lighting fear of the unknown. I mean, obviously you're going in and you're meeting with them the day before, but yeah, that's probably like my biggest fear is like the light. Yeah, I, I hear you. So many people are like, oh my gosh, they have lights on in right. their home, oh, right? They have lights. <laughs> so um, one, like when I look at the entire approach, again, we're not looking to create something just for the aesthetics. Right. So when we take that out, um, there are things that are just not going to be pretty. Yeah. And you just let that go. Mm. And then, of course, light is light. You just need to know how to use it. Yeah. Um, 
like you do studio sessions, right? Yeah. So you know how to set up key light, you know, like all that, like kicker light. But yeah. that, you can still use that in real life. You just have to find that. You have to look for example, it. yeah, like if you have a window light, right, from one room, but the other room had an overhead light on somehow. Yeah. If you angle yourself or your subjects, you can actually use that like quote unquote ugly light as the kicker light. Yeah. And then light is light, right? Yeah. So you can still work with it. Yeah. And then a lot of times I look at light from a storytelling standpoint. So is this a story that happened at night? Then I cannot make it to look like it's golden hour. It needs to be low light. It needs to make sense. And then if it's a very calm story, then the yellow warm light actually helps, sense, right? Yeah. So it's a different approach. And then you will be able to let go of a lot of control and just yeah. think, how do I work with the light instead of against it? Yeah. So if you do have like an orange light, don't try and make a really story that em like the emotion is so cool and tense, right? But if it's like a tender moment, then great. Just work with it. I love that. I think what I'm hearing too is, is being less hard on yourself. Like yeah. when you walk into it, instead of being like, all oh, these are all like 85 rules of like how to be a perfect photographer that I have to follow in order yeah. to get a perfect image. And you're like, no, I'm just here to show the truth and be honest yeah. about it through my lens. Yeah. And it makes more sense for the clients anyways, yeah. because they're like, well, this room, all they feel when they are in the room they will feel this warm light. Yeah. Then if you make the image to tone it like correctly with white balance, then they will feel like, no, that's not the house I live in. Right. So. Now, do you find you ever have clients that are apologizing for their home, not being that Instagram picture perfect? And how do you deal with that? <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> um, like every time, like I walk into someone's home, like they clearly had cleaned up a little yeah. bit. Like most of these people do that. I've had clients like clearly, like, especially with newborns, they just literally yeah. had no time to clean yeah. anything. But a lot of times they've cleaned some and they still apologize. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> our house is a mess. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, I, I assure them that it's okay. This image is for you to start with. Yeah. Like, I am not trying to, you know, like, make this image and put it on billboards. It's for you. Um, And then that helps them to like feel a little better and also i show them my previous sessions how other people's life is like yeah and then so they don't feel as pressured to up, yeah. like keep up with that standard of instagram worthy yeah. so that would be the coolest series is like if you just did like everyone's house is a mess and like just did yeah. like messy house series like this is it <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> i think that's yep. so fun <laughs> yeah, it would. Maybe I'll pull together a collection of that. Right? I mean, oh, so good. I love this. So how do you prepare the parents for a documentary newborn shoot, especially if they are coming from maybe a previous session where they had traditional newborn photography? Yeah, so um, I make sure to get on a phone call with them when they send in an inquiry to make sure that we have the same expectation. And during that phone call, one thing I make sure to talk about is my mission, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, instead of approaching the session as just a photo shoot, I tell them what story I'm trying to tell for them, what they can get out of this beyond a picture that is pretty that they can hang up on the wall that will get updated every year, right? I'm creating legacy. I'm creating this core memory um, for the family. And then that will definitely help them to get on board. Um, and I've literally had moms just tearing up, hearing me explaining my mission, um, especially, you know, moms with newborns <laughs> and then, yeah, with all the emotions. Right. And then I make sure to share with them my other photos as well. So they know exactly what they're getting into. Um, as long as we're on the same page, the communication is there. We're, we're good. Love that. Now, what about, cause I mean, the biggest fear I think for like pose newborn photographers is that toddler that won't cooperate. Now, when you have that kind of situation where you have maybe like a, you know, a silly t toddler or one that's just not having it, do you embrace that? 
and like just make that part of the session. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it. It, it's part of the yeah. story, right? <laughs> We're telling it. a story. This is part of it. Um, and also like, um, a lot of times moms actually love those moments right. more. It's like, yeah, this, this is what happens. Like, right. So you always see those like Instagram versus real life. And how about Instagram is real life? Like I, we just show the real life. Right. So I totally embrace it. I shoot through the entire thing, I the tantrums, that. the crying and, and the discipline. I see like, you will see a lot of finger pointing in my, like, yeah, that's a universal gesture. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, like. I have a lot of photo of that. And then, so uh, to me, there's no like toddler who's not corporative because I'm not trying to create image to fit into my narratives. Yeah. It's just whatever is there. I am documenting it. I am trying to present it in a more artistic way. Yeah. Mm, I love that. So it's just artistic honesty versus like a pre- fab narrative that may not be authentic. I yeah. I love that. I love that. So do you, is your approach change when you're documenting older children, like doing like a family session versus like a newborn session? And if so, how? Yeah. So, um, with newborn, obviously the spotlight will be on the newborn. Not that I don't care about older kids, yeah. but like literally with newborn, the next week they will look different totally. and they will start to do different things. So if I was hired to do a newborn session, I will focus on the newborn and all the story will like unfolds around that newborn. Essentially the baby is the main character. It's the number one um, in the story. But if I am just documenting a family story, then I give everybody equal like time and space, um, even the parents, the grandparents, I will focus on those too, uh, rather than just following along the newborn a little better. I love that. Do you get requests for um, doing sort of like themed things, like say like making pancake bre bre breakfast or cookies or, and just like documenting that at all? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I love those kind of sessions because when there is something going on, people feel more comfortable yeah. um, just being themselves. Um, so a lot of times when it comes to family sessions, I do like actually tell the family in advance like, hey, um, if you have any special like family traditions, do it by all means, because you know I would love to document that tradition, but don't do something just for the sake of photos if yeah. someone come to me and say hey we're doing this crazy thing that we never do and I thought it's just fun for photos and I'll just say you know what it's not the best fit I can yeah. refer you to someone else I love that and I think that's so important is being honest with yourself and being true to what you want to capture and I think mm -hmm. you mentioned having a mission and yeah. and by knowing what your mission is it makes the yeses so much easier and the no so much easier too because yep. if it doesn't fit, that's okay. And you can pass it on. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So how did you come up with your mission and how did you know it was your mission? Yeah. So really also it's just out of curiosity. Yeah. I really want to know like how other people are living their lives because yeah. as a mom myself and also my oldest, she has a spina bifida. Um, so when I, was pregnant with her we're living in china and i had no idea what life is like with spina bifida and so i went online trying to find you know communities to see like what it's like and we found one photo of this little kid not even a girl just a little kid sitting in the wheelchair playing wheelchair basketball so that was all I had in my mind. That was what life was going to be for my daughter. But if you look at her, it's so different. So I have really been spending a lot of time trying to help myself just to understand like, okay, when I have a struggle, how are other moms dealing with this? Can I learn from others? Am I alone? Like, can I, I can't be the only one. Maybe I need a visual to remind myself. And then the more I do it, the more I realize that every mom has the same struggle. Always asking, I can't be the only one. Like, I wonder what 
other people are doing, right? So that's what my mission is, really, just to to present it, like almost through the massiveness of the images that we could create by telling individual stories. And then, like, collaboratively, we can just understand what we're going through as a society right now. Beautiful. I love that so much. Okay, let me just grab another question, my dear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what advice would you give to new photographers who might be struggling to actually find their authentic voice in this age of filters and curated feeds? My number one suggestion is to get off social media. <laughs> if you don't see it, you're not going to try to fit into that, right? Yeah. Um, I know it sounds more like a joking way, but it's actually so true. Yeah. Um, the more you live in real life, the more you will be able to be in tune with what's within. Because it's just so noisy out there, especially on social media like every second there is a notification coming in and you're just distracted. Um, so definitely get off social media, like not saying indefinitely, like yeah. it, social media, it's still a great tool, but use it as a tool, not yeah. use it as inspiration almost Yeah. like find inspiration from within yeah. and then take the time. It does take time to develop your artistic voice. Initially you it, we all start with mimicking and copying others, but you got to start to do something with your own stuff, like experiment with it. What if I don't do that? What would happen? What if I shake my camera, right? Not get that crisp yeah. <laughs> focus and then see what you're drawn to and then try to curate your own artistic portfolio instead of you know, owning, ba um, only like relying on social media, have a different platform, maybe website, or even print your photos and lay them all on the floor and see if you can find a pattern, what you're drawn to, what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. I know for me, I've gone through a bit of a transition over the past, I guess it's been the past seven years, really, because my son was my muse. And hmm. he hit an age where he didn't want to be photographed anymore. And even when I would have the camera, because I was a posed photographer. So it was like, sit, do this, very instructional. So it wasn't overly fun for the guy. Like, yeah. I can absolutely admit that now. And so now, even now, he's just like, whenever he sees the camera, he's like, like, does not <laughs> want to be part of it, doesn't want me even taking any lifestyle or documentary, anything. Um, so it's just been interesting because he was my reason for doing photography and just kind of how I had to come to terms with like, that's changed now and yeah. it's okay. Things are going to change. They're going to evolve. You're going to evolve as an artist. And so I've been in sort of in this place of like figuring out what my new mission is and it's taking me a little longer than I thought. Yeah. But I'll get there. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is actually a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of times go through this as well, like, you know, what, what happens when your kids are grown up, they yeah. will leave. <laughs> like, so it will yeah. it eventually happen. Maybe yeah. you'll get to photograph grandchildren, but right. <laughs> like, you know, there, there is always going to be that space that you will feel like, okay, now what, what's yeah. next. Right. So I am playing with all different kinds of stuff. Documentary is mostly for my personal projects, for my client work, but I, I do all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> like, I love that because I think yeah. it's so important is reminding yourself to play and mm -hmm. stop like, and you don't have to show everything that you put out there and oh, yeah. or everything that you create, right? Because when we forget to play and we put that perfection mask on, it is such a hindrance to actually just being creative. Yeah. And also like, you mentioned like you don't have to put it out there. You don't have to show anyone what yeah. you've created. And right now, like with the social media culture, like you hear so often, oh, so like you should post two days, like a week, yeah. how many times a, a day even, right? And then so everybody's under this like pressure that we have to get out content just like that. Right. Like, but that's not how it is with art. Art yeah. takes time. And then like, if you look back, some of, the famous like photographers it takes them like decades yeah. to come up with like one series yeah. of maybe like 10 photos 
right? So why are we supposed to create like essentially 365 images yeah. a year that's award-winning right. worthy, right? So it's just play. If, if you like, think of like the, the Dutch masters and like all the paintings and how long it t took them to create their pieces of art and what they're yeah. like, can you imagine if they were like in the digital age where they had to be like, boom, 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 like, yeah. We can't, we can't, like, why are we putting this pace at our, on ourselves? Yeah. It's so right? silly. Like, yeah. you're never behind. You're never totally. behind. Right? It's, yeah, yep. we put way too much pressure on ourselves. And like you said earlier about being enough, right? Like, what is enough? What is enough content? What is like, what is yeah. enough? Right? And the answer yep. is you are, you're enough. Like, yeah. just do what you want to do that makes you feel good. Yeah. Like literally, um, I just read this the other day about homeschooling, like educating kids, right? Um, and then this author mentioned that, what if you just believe that your child right now is perfect? And that really hit me because I don't think I ever believe that I am perfect at any moment. Like I was always taught like, yeah, you cannot be prideful. You have to try and be better. But if you think about it, it's such an empowering and freeing thing. If I can just believe that I am perfect right now. I love that. And so, everything, everything I put out is art. Everything yeah. I make is art. And yep. if you just look at that, like everything is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that. So I'm going to switch us into our lightning round. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, what's for dinner tonight? Burritos. Oh, nice. Good one. That's my son's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> yeah. Go to song that lifts you up when you're down. Um, Taylor Swift. Oh, Swifty. <laughs> I like it. Oceans or mountains and why? Uh, oceans. I love water. Everything water. <laughs> love that. Um, what's your favorite comfort food? Uh, boba. Oh, <laughs> like... I had boba for the first time two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yes. What do you think? It was good. I had a, like, yeah. a strawberry one and then my son had a coconut one and they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. I love them a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up as when you were a kid? A teacher. I grew up in a teacher family. So. I love that. Um, let me see. What is something you've accomplished as an adult that your younger self would be proud of? I'm actually kind of like a rebel right now. So I think my younger self would be proud of me for that. I like it. Where do you feel the most centered and happy? Out in nature. What makes your soul light up? Um, a good story, a good touching story. Mm. What do you wish more photographers knew? Um, ooh, this is a good one. Um, take your time. You don't have to rush. What has been the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Know your numbers. Numbers yeah. don't lie. What advice do you have for someone just starting out? Um, hold on to your why. And your why might change, but hold on to it for as long as you can. Love that. So where can our listeners learn more from you? Um, so I am on my website mostly in my email list. And then um, also I am on social media on my Instagram with Amy Dangerfield Photography. I love it. And Amy is actually coming to teach with us for the online newborn retreat. So can you share a little bit what you're going to be teaching on? Yes, I am so excited to teach that class. So I am teaching a documentary starter kit for anyone who wants to start to get in the field and start making documentary newborn photos. So I will actually walk you through what is documentary and what are the restrictions, how you can be free from all those technical um, restrictions, how to find the deeper story beyond the S aesthetics um that holds deeper meaning and i will bring you with me to a behind the scene to show you how exactly i work with the lighting how i find the spot how i 
get a clean frame, and how to be creative when it comes to、um, documentary sessions to go beyond what it looks like and try to hit that what it feels like.、Um, and also, I will share my editing thoughts as well. Love that. We are so excited and so honored to have you. Come and join us as a teacher. So I cannot wait to share this with our our students. So yeah, I, I am super excited. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I love to end my interviews just with this last question, and it is: What are you currently curious about, or artistically curious about? Yeah. So I am actually curious about identity.、Um, I grew up in China. And now I live in the United States. I'm now a U.S. citizen, and we're raising kids in multiple languages and cultures.、Um, so I'm trying to figure out what identity means for me and for my for my children, and how I can translate that visually、um, through photos. I love that. It's beautiful. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, my beautiful friends! I hope you have loved this conversation just as much as I have. I am sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day. We'll see you next time.